Hello and welcome to the third video of my series, Learning Chinese Starting from Zero. In this video, I'm going to look at two different things. One, I'm going to, we're going to play a little bit with characters. And in the second part of the video, we're going to look at a couple of interesting ways to make questions in Chinese. Because obviously when you're learning any language, uh, learning how to ask a question is kind of important. Um, let's start with uh, some fun with some characters. Um, when you first start to learn characters, it's a bit difficult because they start to look a lot like each other after a while. And one of the techniques that people use for learning characters is to try and make up stories or to see see a story in the character. Um, I, these are four very simple characters, but they give you kind of the idea of what's going on. The first, the first picture here is a picture of a person. And if you look at it, it kind of could be a person. The second one, the character for big, you can say looks like a person with their arms stretched out to their side as big as they can be. And that's big, so you can make a little story like that. Then if you take a big person and put a roof over them, that's sky or heaven. And then this one is, is kind of interesting. You can, take, uh, you can take what you want from it. Uh, it's basically sky or heaven and think of a head the head of the person sticking through the roof or sticking through the sky. And yes, that means husband. So again, take what you want from the meaning of that one. Uh, one of the things you can start to do with Chinese characters after you learn a few is you can start to put, toge put them together in combinations to make new words. So here's an example of two simple characters, which this is ice and this is river. You put them together, and if you think for a second, what's a nice river? And if you're thinking for a little bit, it's actually a glacier. So you've been able to take two characters that you'll probably learn quite quickly and to make another more complicated word. Here again, here's a character for fire. Here's a character for mountain. Again, this one kind of looks like a mountain. You put fire and mountain together and you get the word, can you guess? Volcano. Right? which is a, like a fire mountain. This one is interesting because this is the character for middle. This is a character for kingdom or country. And depends if you have heard this before or not, but China is known as the Middle Kingdom. And these are the characters that signify the country of China. Over here on the right, we have two, I think, kind of interesting characters. Two of the first characters I learned along with middle uh, when I first went to China about 30 years ago, when I was on the train, uh, on the sleep in the sleeping cars, there were three berths on each side. Um, and there was an upper berth, a middle berth, and a lower berth. And you had to read your ticket. And from your ticket would have which berth you were on, and then you had to match it up. So those are the, some of the first characters I learned in Chinese. Now, what's interesting is how these work when it comes to time. Okay. In English, they're used in Chinese for words like next week or last week or next month or last month. Now, the interesting thing to think about is, if I said up week, would you try to would you tend to think that up week was next week or last week? And I think most of us in the in the West would think, oh, up week, that's next week, and down week, oh, that's last week. But in Chinese, it's the opposite. Up week using the character for up and then for week, which I'll show you in a minute. Up week actually means last week. And up month means last month. Down week is next week. Down month is next month. Now, just one other little thing. Um, you may not realize it, but you already know the meaning of this. You already know the pronunciation of this one. This is the character, the first part of the character for Shanghai the biggest city in China. And it means on. And then the second character in Shanghai is ocean. So on the ocean. Right? So again, it's an example of how you can build up more complex words using simple characters. Now this part I, I went over in the last video and I wanted to go through it again because I didn't I, I just wanted to introduce it in the last one. I want to give you a little more detail now. A couple of things. 
these are really important characters. These are some of the characters you'll learn the first and you'll you'll learn first and you will see the most often as you learn Chinese. The other thing that's interesting is to realize how simple this is to learn. In English, we have the word for I and then we have me with he, him, she, her, all that kind of thing. In Chinese, I, me is just one character. I or, or me. It's one character. He, him, same character. And to make things even easier when you're talking, he and she, the characters when they're written are different. When they're spoken, they're identical. Okay? Uh, which makes it a lot easier. So really, when you're listening or speaking, you only need to know I, you, he, and then we is when we put this character on the end. You plural, they plural. And then if we want to add a D at the end, we can do all our possessives. Okay? So you think about it, that's uh, basically three, four, five characters or sounds you have to learn. And you've got what in English is probably 15 or so words you got to learn. Okay? And so even when you're making sentences, you don't have to think, oh, him, her, uh, he, all that kind of thing. It's just one character. The other thing to realize in this, if you've heard Chinese people speaking English, one of the things you'll notice is a lot of times uh, Chinese will have trouble saying he or she. They're not, they'll say he when they mean she or she when they mean he. And they don't seem to be able to get it right a lot of times, especially for people who are new, new to speaking English. And the reason for that, if you think about it, is in Chinese it's the same word. You don't have to differentiate it. So it's only when you get to English you have to remember he and she. When you're speaking Chinese, it's just one sound. That's it. Ta, that's it. Right? So it makes it a lot easier. Now, continuing the series of, of things you can do very quickly in Chinese once you learn a few basic characters. I'm going to show you here is really with 11 characters, you can count all the way to 999. Just 11. So you think all the words you have to learn in English, like 80 and 85 and, and 152 and all that. All these different words you have to learn in Chinese, you just have to learn 11. So you, you have characters for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and the character for 100. The way Chinese makes numbers is fascinatingly simple. Let's look at the number 15. The number 15 is simply 10, 5. So 10 and 5 together is 15. So the word for 15 is 10, 5. The, word for, the words for 35, again, if you know all those characters, you just go 3, 10, 5. That's 35. Dead simple. You want to know 89? Oh, it's 8, 10, 9. You say those three sounds, and you've got 89. So, and then if you want to get to 100, you have to add the 1 at the beginning if you're, if you're adding on 100. So 200 will be 200. So 157 is 1, 100, 5, 10, 7. Right? So, so once you learn how to think like that, all the numbers in Chinese, dead simple. You can learn that once you, once you know these 11 characters and you can learn those relatively quickly. You've got all the numbers from 1 to 1,000, basically. Piece of cake. And once you learn those numbers, that's not all you can use them for. In, Chinese, in English, we have 12 different words for months of the year. In Chinese, you just have to learn this character, the, the character for month, and then every month is just numbered. So January is one month. Uh, November is 11 months. 11 month. September is 9 month. Right? So once you know your numbers and this character, boom, there's 12 more words you know. Same thing or similar thing with days of the week. You learn this, which means week, weekday basically. So weekday one is Monday, weekday two is Tuesday, weekday three is Wednesday, weekday six is Saturday, and then Sunday we have a little special one, and that's Sunday. But essentially again, Learn one little thing, you know, you use your numbers, and then you've got all your days of the week. So you got your days of the week, months of the year, and count from 1 to 1,000 with 11, 12, 13, 14 characters, or 15 if we add um, the character here. So for 15 characters, you know 
all those numbers, days of the week, months of the year. It's a, it's a really good example of how you can build up vocabulary as you learn more and more simple characters and then start to combine them. Now, I want to talk a little bit about, for the second part of the video, talk a little bit about questions and how we uh, put together questions. Chinese is, is really quite innovative in how it does questions. And if you think in English about some of the ways you have to compose questions, it can get co quite complicated. You know, does he go to school? And it's like, huh? So it's, it's, it's tough for a lot of learners of English. Now, I'm going to talk about two different ways of making questions. And this is, you know, in addition to uh, the, the normal question words like who, what, where, when, why, which Chinese also has. But I want to talk about how to make questions without those words. So um, the simplest way to make a question in Chinese is you just take any sentence and you add ma to the this little character to the end. And guess what? That's a question. So if I say I want go, that'll be a sentence or you know he want go or you want go. So you want go ma means do you want to go? As soon as you put that at the end, it becomes a question. We'll, I'll give you another example in a, in a couple of slides, but we'll go to the second way. The second way is to give the two options when you ask a question. So I may ask you, do you want to go? And so you want not want go. So if you think about it, really, if, if I'm saying, do you want to go? What I'm really saying is, do you want to go or do you not want to go? I'm basically giving you two options. In Chinese, that just makes it explicit. The question is very simple. You want, not want, go. Okay? And the answer in Chinese is even simpler than in English. In English, you would say, you know, if someone said, do you want to go? And you would say, yeah, I do. Okay? In Chinese, it's simple want or not want. You don't have to say I or anything like that. You just say want, not want, or not want. So you want, not want, go? Question, answer, not want. You think about it, how simple is that? So let's, let's look at another example. And this also brings back the, uh, the characters we were talking about at the beginning of this video. So he likes her okay so he these are the two characters that mean like and that's her right so he doesn't have to say he likes she or anything like that he he likes her is the statement in english we have to change that to does he like her to make a question in chinese he like her ma he's put a ma at the end and that's a question. It means right away, does he like her? Right? The other way, which is the offering the two choices. So he like, not like her. And the answer again would be like or not like. Okay? Very simple. Two options, pick either one. I'll give me one more example. So uh, will he go to China tomorrow? Is, is the question. Um, so in, in if I want to make the statement first, tomorrow he will go China. Okay, so to, this is the character for tomorrow. Remember we put the, as opposed to in English where we put the time at the end, in Chinese we put at the beginning because of the nature of how we do tenses. So tomorrow he, and this is the character that's used for the future, go China. So. Question one, tomorrow he will go China. Ma, bingo, there's your question, right? No inverting subject, ob uh, subject verb, any of that kind of thing. Question two, tomorrow he will, not will, go China. The answer is either will, this character, or not will, that character. So again, you have two very simple ways of making questions. At the beginning, it's a little hard to get used to. 
Um, and, and sometimes you end up seeing people use both uh, at the, in the same. No, you have to use one or the other. If you put a ma, you don't ask the will not will. Okay, you have to pick one and you can use either one and then um, make the question. Uh, like I said, it's a little hard to get used to at the beginning. Once you do, you find it's actually really, really convenient in making questions. Now to wrap up, uh, I just want to review quickly. So there's two very easy ways to make questions in Chinese. The first one is just put a ma at the end of any sentence. The second one is to ask, to give the two options that would usually be available in a question like, do you want, not want to go? Okay. And of course, like I mentioned, there are the other uh, question words as well for asking questions. And, and, and also, as you start to learn basic characters, okay, as I said, you're going to be able to build new words more easily. And so one of the things you can try to do as you're going through that process is when you learn a new word or new character, see if there's any other characters that you can um, join with it so you can learn a couple of characters that are linked. So you're kind of learning a cluster of characters at a time as, to just, as opposed to one character. I'll give you a real simple example. So these are the characters for North, South, East, and West. Okay. It turns out you actually know um, these characters. These are actually the characters for Beijing, Nanjing. Okay. So these are two big cities in, in China. One means Northern capital. And this one means Southern capital. Okay. So you learn these characters and then you can also link them with some other characters to help you remember them and also increase your vocabulary. And then one of my favorite words in Chinese um, is Dong Xi, which is the character for thing. A thing in Chinese is an East West. I, I don't know why that happens, but to me, it's one of the coolest words in Chinese. Okay. So that's it for this lesson. And I think we're going to do one more uh, lesson after that, and that should be it. So hopefully we'll see you in the next one.